What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. In today's video, I'm going to be upgrading the cooling system on my Z. So if you guys plan on tracking your car, if you guys like beating on your car a little bit, to keep it so that the cooling system is going to be held reliable and so that the entire thing stays working as it should, it's not a half bad idea to replace all the stock rubber hoses that are found in the cooling system and upgrading them to silicone hoses. Now after about 5 to 10 years, depending on where you live, the stock rubber hoses are going to crack, they're going to deteriorate, and they're going to break down on you. Now that's why I'm going to be replacing those rubber ones with these upgraded silicone reinforced ones. So these coolant hoses are made from HPS and they come with a lifetime warranty. I'm going to be replacing the radiator hoses along with the heater core hoses with these new upgraded ones. Now while I'm at it and I'm doing this entire procedure, what I'm also going to be doing is changing the thermostat inside the engine bay with a new one. The difference between the old one and the new one is that this new one is going to open up at a lower temperature, which means it's going to be able to keep the engine cooler longer. The thermostat is going to go into open loop after the coolant gets to 68 degrees Celsius versus the higher temperature that the stock one is rated for. So if you guys plan on beating on your car or even just driving it hard every once in a while, this is a great way to keep those temperatures down and keeping your car nice and reliable. All the HPS kits can be found in blue, red, or black, and they all come with brand new hardware. So you're not going to have to worry about using the old rusty stuff that's found in your engine bay. So I like doing this kind of entire coolant overhaul on my car, regardless if I'm tracking the car or not. This is just a really nice maintenance thing to do. Now one thing to keep in mind is that if you guys plan on replacing your thermostat with a lower temperature one, what you're going to notice is that in the winter time, when you go to use your heat, because the coolant is going to be colder, it's not going to be as hot, the heat that's coming out of the vents isn't going to be as warm. So just keep that in mind should you guys daily your vehicle for the whole year. So if that isn't an issue for you, don't worry about it. But as for all this stuff here, we're going to be throwing all this in the engine bay. So first things first, we need to drain all the coolant that's found in the cooling system. In order to drain all the coolant found inside the cooling system, we have to get underneath the vehicle and we have to remove the pepcock that's found on the radiator. To get access to that, we first need to go ahead and remove the undershield that's found below the engine bay. And there's also going to be some nuts and bolts that we need to remove. So there's going to be 16 of these and you can remove them with either a 10 millimeter socket or a Phillips head screwdriver. After you take all those out, there's going to be three additional plastic clips. Take those all out and then this entire tray can be removed from underneath the vehicle. If we jump underneath the car with the shield removed, you can see all the underneath of the engine bay. So found over here towards the front of it, you're going to find this little pepcock. So what it essentially is, is it's a Phillips screw that holds all the coolant inside the radiator. We need to unscrew that and it'll release all the coolant that's found inside the rad. Before allowing all the coolant to drain from the rad, grab a funnel and an empty container to catch all the coolant. This way the coolant won't spill onto the ground. You'll be able to catch it and should you want to, you'll be able to reuse that coolant. When you remove the pepcock, the coolant will drain out of the bottom and it'll come out at a relatively slow rate. To make it come out faster so you're not sitting there all day waiting for the coolant to drain, go to the top of the engine bay where you'll see the radiator caps. If you remove both of them, it will allow air to enter from the top of the cooling system, resulting in the fluid coming out at a much faster rate. With the coolant evacuated from the engine, we can now go ahead to remove all the lines and the thermostat so we can replace them with the new ones. So I'm going to first begin with replacing the coolant lines going to the thermostat along with the coolant line going to the radiator. So all that is going to be found on the front of the engine and you do have to go underneath the car and above the car to get access to both of them. I'm going to be addressing the lines going to the heater core after this. So let's begin with working on the front of the car. Now to make your life a little bit easier when you're doing this entire procedure, if you can take some components in the engine bay out, it'll make it so that you have a lot more room to work with. So for instance, if you guys are working on a Z, if you take out both air boxes, if you take out the coolant overflow tank, and if you also remove the strut brace found on top, it'll give you a lot more room to work with. To get started on removing all the old hoses, we're going to begin with the upper rad hose. So that's going from the top of the engine block to the top of the radiator. There's going to be two clamps that are holding it in place. To take the hose out, you have to remove the clamps that are found on both ends of the hose, slide it out of the way, and then you can pull the entire thing up and out. Now you should be able to use a pair of needle nose pliers or channel locks to get this done. You don't necessarily need some fancy tools to get access to the hoses that are found right there. However, if you do have a set of these clamp pliers, it's going to make it super easy to get this removed. 
move because there's going to be a locking mechanism attached to it. You can squeeze the clamp and it's going to compress and open up that hose clamp so that you can move the entire thing out of the way and then you can pull the hose off of the fitting. The other rat hose is going to be found on the opposite side of the radiator and that's found on the bottom of it. To take that out you have to remove the clamp that's found on the thermostat housing and down low on the bottom side of the rat. Now you're going to have to go underneath the vehicle to get this one removed because you can't get access to it from the top. There might be a little bit of residual coolant that's found inside the lines, but there's not going to be much because we evacuated about 95% of it. After that's out, you can get access to the thermostat itself. So the thermostat is going to be bolted up to the block with three 10 millimeter bolts. Two of them are relatively easy to get to. Now the one on the left side of it is somewhat difficult because you have to remove the electrical connector going to the cam phaser so that you have enough room to get access to that bolt. But it's not difficult if you use a pick or something like that to slide the electrical connector out of the way. It'll give you enough space to remove the entire thing. When you do remove the thermostat though, be sure to remove the thermostat along with the gasket for it. Now when you take it out, there is going to be a little bit of coolant that's going to drain out, but that's not a big deal. We're going to be replacing all that fluid afterwards with new fluid and we're going to top it back up. Now removing the lines that are going to and from the heater core, they can basically be removed in the exact same manner. Now getting to them might be a little bit more difficult than the ones up front, only because the ones in the back are going to be tucked away on the sides of the engine and they're going to be connected to the back side of the firewall. So the heater core is attached back there, so if you can find the lines, the stock lines that run from there and go to the front, you'll be able to change those out and swap them with the new HPS ones. Now not every car is going to be as difficult as the Z, so for my Honda for instance, it's a piece of cake to get access to the ones on the back side of the motor because there's so much room. The less room that you have inside the engine bay to work with, probably the more stuff you have to remove, which is why we removed the strut brace earlier. Now I'll be honest with you guys, taking out those heater core hoses was a pain in the butt. If you don't have those hose clamp pliers, the special ones that have like the little trigger on it, it's going to be very difficult to get these things removed. The concept is pretty much the same from every vehicle, but once you take them out, you can see how much of a difference there is between the old stock lines and the aftermarket HPS ones. You can see there's so much more reinforcement on the inside of the hose, and the hose itself is constructed of a different material. There is no rubber that's found inside these silicone hoses. It kind of feels like a polyurethane. These hoses right here are a much better quality, and they're not going to deteriorate like the rubber ones. So if you guys install these on your car, you're not going to have to replace them down the road. Putting everything back together is actually going to be a little bit easier because it's already been removed. Now to make my life a little bit easier next time I need to do this, what I'm going to be doing is putting a little bit of 3M silicone paste on the inside part of the hose or a little bit on the metal connector for each one of the heating components. So if it's coming from the back side of the firewall or it's coming from the front part of the rad. Those ends that come out of them, if you can put some silicone paste on there, the hose that you put on is going to be able to easily come off should you guys need to replace them or get access to something later. Install each of the hoses that are coming to and from the heater core back onto the car and the same thing can be done for the hoses that are going to and from the rad. Now when you go ahead to install the new thermostat, the one that opens up at a lower temperature, you're going to want to install and torque each one of those 10 mil bolts up to the proper manufacturer spec. If you guys want to find that torque spec, you guys can find more information in the description box. But as for the install itself, putting everything back together is going to be pretty straightforward. When you're putting the new thermostat on the engine block, you do want to use a new thermostat gasket. Now if you don't have one, you guys can find a link for one in the description box. I have the part number directing you right to Amazon so you can buy one for yourself. They're under 10 bucks, and it's just going to ensure that you guys don't have a leak when you put coolant in the system and turn the car on. With all the coolant lines and the new thermostat inside the engine bay, there's two more things that we have to do to complete the job. So the first thing is put back everything inside the engine bay that we took out. So that also includes reconnecting that connector for the camshaft phaser in the engine bay. After that's in, go ahead and install both air boxes along with the expansion tank for all the coolant. Now last but not least, the strut brace has to go back on and then we're done for that part. Now the last part, which is part number two that you still need to do, is bleed the entire cooling system. The cooling system is now evacuated of all the fluid, so we need to put all that coolant back in those lines so the engine can run properly. Now not only that, the fluid that's found inside the heater core has been evacuated since we did this entire drain at the beginning of this video. So to get all that fluid back in, we have to put it all through the top cap found in the engine bay and I'm going to show you how easy it is to get that done if you have the right tools. Okay, so you guys remember that funnel that I was using earlier? Well, this thing is actually part of a kit and the kit comes with everything that you need to re-bleed your cooling system. So it comes with many different attachments and other parts to get the job done. Now, it doesn't matter if you're working with something Japanese or American, there are adapters and other parts to get it to work with any vehicle. So what I'm going to be using today is the green one, this guy here, that other part that goes on top, and I'm going to be using the funnel 
to bleed the entire cooling system and put new fluid through the entire thing. To begin with the bleeding, we need to put the adapter and the cap where the radiator cap was. The opening at the center of it will allow the coolant to pass through the cap and fill the system of coolant. Make sure that the cap is tight so it will not leak during this entire procedure. Following that, we need to put the large funnel on top of the cap along with the funnel plug. You can then fill the funnel with the appropriate coolant for your car. By solely doing this, you will only be filling up the radiator of coolant. In order to get that coolant to be flushed through the entire system to bleed out all the air, put the funnel plug in the inside part of the funnel, refill the funnel of coolant, and then go inside the car and turn the vehicle on. That's going to get all the coolant moving and then remove the funnel plug to allow coolant to fill the radiator along with all the coolant lines. Since we removed the heater core hoses, the heater core also needs to be bled. To do this, go inside the car and turn the AC system to as hot as the system will go along with on full blast. This will allow coolant to pass through the heater core and the hoses, bleeding the entire thing. Refill the funnel if it begins to get low. You'll be able to see the air escaping from the system through the funnel. When it stops bubbling, turn the engine off, but do not put the funnel plug in the funnel yet, as more coolant still needs to enter the system. Let the engine cool down with the funnel attached and coolant inside the funnel. Only when the coolant level stays put can you insert the funnel plug and remove it from the car. The extra coolant in the funnel can then be returned to the jug without spilling or making a mess. Following that, you can run the funnel along with all the attachments through some water to clean everything out. Now what's really cool is that all these attachments can be put back into the funnel and then the cap can be put on top. At that point, you can then store it and put it away. If you go ahead to look at the expansion tank, you should then see the entire thing be right at the middle setting. So the coolant level will be right above the min and below the max. So if you want, you can put a little bit more in, but it isn't exactly necessary. You can take the car for a spin, drive it, make sure everything works properly, let it cool down, and then at that point you can check to see if the coolant level needs to be filled anymore. If it does, fill it, but if not, the job is done. Now something to note, if you guys are doing this procedure and you have the funnel attached to the car, if the coolant system is open and there is no rad cap on there to seal the entire thing off, do not rev the car. Don't ask me how I know this, but you will indeed make a mess. So if you have the funnel attached to the car, only let the engine idle. After taking the Z out for a spin, there's no leaks, I checked everything out, the coolant level is right where it's supposed to be, and everything seems to be working pretty good. Now I noticed the coolant temps are a little bit colder, but it's kind of hard to tell because it's cold outside. So it's 15 degrees outside, now this will definitely pay off if you guys live in a warm area. So if you guys live somewhere where it gets really warm, this is definitely a great modification for you guys, especially if you like beating on your car a little bit. If you guys like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you want to find any of the products that I use today in this video, there's links in the description box directing you right to Amazon. Everything that you saw in this video is available for you guys to purchase. If you guys aren't subscribed, consider doing it. I've got car videos coming out for you guys every single week. Anyways guys, if you have any other further questions, comment sections down there. You guys know what to do. Thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.